my name is Philip Dickin, and I'm the head of European Equities. Uh, right, should we have a look at the furthest for Europex UK? We run a number of different strategies, whether that's pan-European, including UK, Europex UK, small cap, or dividend funds. Europe's home to many international companies which are global market leaders, so whether that's luxury goods or consumer staples, or even at the small cap level, a number of the companies that we invest in, while small, would actually still be global leaders in their niches. We invest with a quality bias to the, uh, the stocks that we invest in. So when we look at a company, particularly with a smaller company, we're looking very much at the strength of the business model. The capex you spend this year is for production next year. Uh, how much of the actual capex is unnecessary? Porter's Five Forces is the analytical framework uh, devised by Michael Porter back in the 1970s. He was a Harvard professor of business and what it looks at is the strength of the business model based on the barriers to entry, the uh, threat of substitution, the power of suppliers, the power of buyers and the rivalry within the industry. So we use this methodology to try and analyse how strong the company really is and why they can generate the returns that they do and is that sustainable over time. What we try and do is invest in areas which are less subject to the political vagaries of the market and companies that can thrive whatever the political weather. The, the good scenario, they say we're going to sell X billion of assets and buy back shares, so is that right? The European team is built up with a, a number of different investment professionals. We are 10 investment professionals plus three support staff and we have a mix of people, whether British, uh, French, German. They bring different ways of looking at companies and different biases. And so the day we all agree on stocks or sectors or positioning, that's the day when we're failing as investors because we should constantly be questioning. Why do they have to have an old services company with a drilling business attached? The good thing about the European team is that whilst we're experts in our particular area, we're actually supported by a much broader team, whether that's other equity specialists, UK, US, emerging markets or, or, or global. We also have fixed income investors who specialise in high yield government bond investing. And so that perspective advantage gives us a big insight into the environment in which our companies operate. I guess the cons consumer discretionary is probably doing okay, is it? Is that a sort of structural growth story? It, it's, it, it's actually mixed. In some ways, emerging markets are losing out in this battle, and it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, one of the things we like to do is visit our companies as well. So if we have a big position, we'll certainly have met the management once, twice, or, or maybe even many times. But most of our companies we've actually visited on the ground to see their sites and really understand what they're doing. Why can they compete versus the large caps if it's a small cap company? Why can they beat these bigger players? And why should the equity be exciting to us as potential shareholders? We see a lot of companies in Europe so the Eurostar is a fantastic facility. We get very quickly to Paris or Brussels, um, and then a lot of the time we're otherwise on, on a plane to various European capitals. When companies come around on their normal quarterly reporting round, they will be talking about their quarterly results and they'll be very focused on <coughs> delivering a message. Whereas if we go and see them in their offices, in their um, factories or plants, then we can really get an understanding of what they're doing, why they're doing what they're doing, and just step away from the usual reporting cycle. Well, we have Rue de la Ville Le Vex, s'il vous plaît. En fait, c'est le centre um, free center. I always enjoy visiting Paris because I spent time here as a student. Obviously, today, post the Eurozone crisis, things are a bit more difficult, but that doesn't mean to say that it's impossible for the economy to grow or for consumer spending to grow. Even if the French economy is not growing particularly fast at the moment, it is home to a number of world leading companies. And amongst those would be uh, luxury goods companies. That very long heritage, the artisanal products, is something that they've been able to export extremely well. So they're made in France, like made in Italy, it's something that has real cachet. We're here in Paris today to see a company called Iliad, which is a, uh, a quad play telecoms company. And the interesting thing here is that for years, France was a very high cost country for consumers uh, when they were paying for mobile. So Iliad spotted an opportunity to come in as the low cost operator, new equipment at a much cheaper cost. And so they've been able to capture um, a very significant market share. It's, it's, it's designed, it has been designed by Stark, but it's very important because it's a, it's a key advantage compared to competition. 
So does and, and if somebody else comes into my house, do, can they use the 3G? If he's a free mobile user, yeah, okay. of course yeah. he will. Yeah. We want to have the lowest fixed cost base with the highest innovation and technology. Yeah. So this is this is the strong leverage that we have. Yeah. Do you want to yeah, we'll go to the to the office and have a quick chat? Yeah. So I've just had a very interesting meeting with uh, Iliad, and I think the thing that comes out of it is not anything specific in terms of the numbers, but just how focused they are on costs and the, the provision of uh, a quality service. It's all very well sitting in London listening to analysts explain what a company does, but I think it really brings it home. When you come to the, uh, the site of the, uh, the company, you meet the management in their offices, and you really get a better understanding of why they're doing what they're doing and how they're doing it better than the competition. Right, OK, so we've got the oils note. Europe is quite exciting today. A couple of years ago, when we used to market European funds in Asia, we used to get very little time from our clients for, because they saw Asia grow much faster than Europe and they saw the trouble with the European single currency. Whereas now, Asian growth is slowing and Europe is picking up. And if you come to look at the stocks here, you'll find that the market is cheap compared to other developed markets like the US, but also you can invest in global leaders.